Okay, homies, you know we talk about Benny Pepino a lot on this channel, but I can't help it. He's my favorite um, absurdist performance artist on YouTube. And this video is beautiful. Like, I had to talk about this video because it's it's literally everything that he believes failed all at once. And he has to come on this ridiculous channel of his and try to defend it. He kind of has to keep... He has to shovel water out of the sinking boat with like a little thimble. And uh, it's just kind of fascinating to watch. So uh, we're going to look at this video and just piece by piece, I'm going to use the restroom on it. And which is easy, to be honest. I mean, it's like the easiest thing in the world, but it's good content. And it's true to quote the great financial genius whose advice is make more money, Dave Ramsey. Um, you have a you have a mental health problem. You have a mental health problem. You, you, you have a mental health problem. No. So here we go. A pretty bunch of tragedy in Texas. A lot of people died, got sick, etc. Couldn't uh, use their uh, medical equipment and blah, 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 blah. Big tragedy. So here we go. Let's see if this guy. Let's hear him try to desperately defend all his uh, failed positions. Here we go. It, requ it required rolling blackouts. Now, I've seen a lot of people in California chortling at this. And because Texas and California are rivals, Texas is conservative, California is uber liberal. Okay, well, here's the thing. When Californians look at Texas, they're like, ha ha, your grid failed. You are getting some of that from people in the media left. Let us just quickly note, when California's electrical grid failed, it's because it was hot during the summer. I, I used to live there. Okay, I lived there for nearly all of my life. And every year there would be Rolling blackouts of some sort or another. Okay, so just to give some perspective on this, he's like, oh, it's even worse. He's basically implying, oh, it's even worse in California. This is from, and this has been written about extensively. You can find this information at a bunch of, from a bunch of different sources online. But I thought this was a good summary from the Union of Concerned Scientists. Here, I'll just read this. this is a good summary. In California, the August 2020 outages were much smaller and far shorter. On August 14th, the California grid operator asked utilities to shed 500 milliwatts of load for approximately two hours. On August 15th, it was 500 milliwatts of load for 20 minutes. To make the comparison more explicit, the Texas power grid has been cutting off 20 to 30 times as much electricity demand as California did. And this has been happening for days on end. Also, in Texas, an entire city lost their water supply. City of Abilene, no timetable for when water will be restored. An entire city, they're just like, oh, we don't have running water. The other thing he says, he's like, I lived in California forever. L.A. boy over here. Bad Barbie, bad Barbie, bad Barbie, bad Barbie, bad Barbie. Uh, living in L.A., uh, he's like, we've, we had blackouts for every year. Um... I don't know. I don't live in L.A. I don't live in California, so I don't know if this is uh, true. I could not find any evidence of this, and I asked like 10 different people who do live in California and have lived in California uh, for over a decade, and they could not confirm that there's blackouts every year. Um, but uh, maybe he fell sleepy. Maybe he fell sleepy, and he's like, oh, it's a blackout. This, this black blackout in California is out of control. I saw, I saw, and I, little movies happened while I had the blackout of me. I could fly in the blackout, and I was at my school, and I didn't have my clothes on in the blackout. This is from NPR. California issues first rolling blackouts since 2001. So, uh, I, okay. As heat wave bakes western U.S. And this is something else that he doesn't want to talk about is extreme weather. Connected to climate change, that's not too convenient for his oil, for all that oil uh, that uh, finances his show and keeps, mm, oh, I like that, I like that. I mean, this really is a um, truly bizarre situation here because this is a guy who's talking about something that he does have a total conflict of interest in because he did he got his start taking millions of dollars from fossil fuel uh, billionaires. So it's like it's like um this this just doesn't work. This doesn't work. This is not what we call objective anything. Because of the completely predictable weather pattern of it being hot during the summer in Los Angeles. Is that is not the same thing as a once in a century cold snap that hits Texas and then the power grid fails. See, unexpected events tend to have unforeseen consequences. Oh, it's totally unforeseen. We had no idea. 
We know this is totally unforeseen. In February 2011, an ice storm struck the state, crippling power plants and forcing rolling blackouts. After that disaster, lawmakers and regu regulators studied how the state's electrical and nat natural gas infrastructure needed to be shored up, as in other states to withstand punishingly deep and extended winter freezes. And the title of this article is, Those in charge of Texas's deregulated power sector were warned again and again that the electric grid was vulnerable. And this happened in 2011. See, unexpected events tend to have unforeseen consequences. Unforesee, unforeseeable. We just can't see. We just couldn't see this. We just could. Oh, what about that? Basically the exact same thing, like a dress rehearsal for the exact same thing happened in 2011 and you had to have blackouts and they warned you about this exact thing. <laughs> That's just unforeseeable, <laughs> except that it's exactly seeable, like totally seeable. And <laughs> it can't be that my view of the world is absolutely failing in front of my eyes, a deregulation and let the market decide and blah, 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 blah. Oh no, it couldn't be that. It couldn't be that. Like, <sighs> This guy is so dumb. Like, these people are so dumb. I mean, we know that. We already know that. And it's like, it's fun content, but it's like, how, like, how can you, how do you not um, every day saying such stupid stuff? Like, how does it not kind of make you not want to do it anymore? Like, doesn't it at least get kind of boring? Like, you have a bunch of money. Why don't you just take the money and go do something else? Go, uh. Go hang out with Gina Carano. Let her kick you in the face or something. Yeah. Figure out something funner to do. So just you got to understand the level of stupidity of this, of what I just read and compared to what this guy is saying. Like it, it's this is profound stupidity, like like next level dumbness, because we did everything that this guy advocates deregulation. We disconnected from the rest of the grid because we're red, proud red state. We don't deal with any of that crap. And we let the free market do, do its mighty hand work on it, that shit. And because we're disconnected from the power grid to avoid that re pesky regulation, um, that didn't allow us to get help from the rest of the grid. So a bunch of people froze and many of them died. And many of them are sicker now because they didn't have access to their crap and blah, 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 blah. And because it was deregulated, they weren't subject to federal regulations, which would have forced them to weatherize this stuff. That, that pesky government regulation coming in and slowing down the beautiful free market, which caused people to freeze and uh, caused uh, people to live in the dark for days and not have water. I mean, of course, this guy's worldview has been failing for decades, but um, now it's, it's like real time in Texas. Real time, like you're just watching like everything he says uh, completely fall apart and make no sense. And again, because it's deregulated, like he likes, um, they warned them again and again and again. They were outside of what they would have been forced to do. They warned them again and again and again. Look, we had a freeze. OK, 2011. This happened. This is going to happen again. You got to weatherize this crap. You got to start now. And they were like, we don't want to spend the money to do that. Because it's the free market. And the free market has decided to go cuckoo cuckoo cuckoo. Coo, coo. So uh, the babies of society uh, poop their diapers on this one. And um, society is uh, cleaning up the poo poo. Okay, this part is beautiful. This part is Jesus Christ level. It is, it is, it isn't. Natural gas was failing because a lot of the pipelines were not actually insulated for this kind of cold. So they, as always, whenever there's a crisis, there are generally multiple factors in play. But you'll notice that the media are only defending one of the factors. That would be the wind turbines. Now. So he says the media are only defending one factor, the wind turbines. The media is rushing to defend those wind turbines because, I don't know, because they're all Marxist, Dadaists, communists who love seeing things spin around. Typical Marxism, love to see things spin around on a blades of things. I mean, this guy is such a dope, like such an idiot, because the reason they're doing articles about wind turbines here, I'll read you one of the last ones on here, and there's a bunch of them that are the, basically the same, along the same lines. 
From PolitiFact, how Fox News far-right TV blamed green energy for Texas power outages. The reason they were talking about wind turbines is because they had to correct these morons who are paid by the fossil fuel industry to say that it wasn't fossil fuel's fault. <laughs> so he's like, this, this leftist, this leftist Karl Marx Engels media is just, they love wind turbines. Oh, they love it. Because you know why? Because it's... <laughs> Because they hate me. That's why. It's all because they hate me. The only reason they were writing about wind turbines is because these idiots tried to blame wind turbines because they're paid by the fossil fuel industry. I mean, it's... <laughs> this is a grown man. This is a grown man. And how many views? How many views? How many views on this thing? Over a quarter million. Because we got to remember the first law of content... Guys, you want to start a successful YouTube channel? Think of the stupidest thing you can say. Um, preferably something that's like in support of a horrible dinosaur industry, a destructive industry, or some kind of a horrible uh, war machine or something. Just uh, just get get on their side, say a bunch of things you know are wrong, and um, and then they'll give you money, and then you'll get a bunch of, you could do ads, and then also a bunch of dum-dums will watch your content. But in summary, the first law of content is the worse the content, the more the views. So just remember that, okay? So he's super upset that the far left media, the far left socialist media, had to write a bunch of articles to correct what these dum dums were saying. Um, he's super upset about that. Notice the title of this video, The Wind Turbines Are Frozen, is the name of this video. There we go. There we go. Over a quarter million views in one day. Oh no, it's like three days. Flushing toilets. This content is really- Flushing, to flush, 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 flushing toilets. Let's be real about this. Wind turbines are one of the most expensive forms of energy in Texas. Texas is a natural gas and oil state. And so the- case that many conservatives are making today is what if we had invested more in, you know, the more efficient form of energy and less? Oh, and I'm just saying this as a neutral part party. <laughs> what if we gave even more money to fossil fuels? By the way, I'm paid by uh, fossil fuel billionaires. No conflict of interest there. Nothing weird. OK, so just to uh, deal with these like, oh, it's so expensive. These wind turbines. Here's from Ars Technica. Wind power prices now lower than the cost of natural gas. So... <laughs> Bye bye. This is also really like an economically illiterate view of cost as well, because he's like, oh, it costs, it costs less, it costs less, which we already proved wind power prices uh, lower than uh, cost of natural gas. But this is really like a baby's understanding of what cost means. It's just like, oh, the cost is just the money I give and then I get a thing and that's what it costs and that's it. Well, unfortunately, this is not like a grown up or a real, um, what would you call it, an actual real understanding of what cost means, because cost isn't just I gave the money. Thank you. Now I have the money. Uh, cost is also like there's societal cost. There's uh, environmental cost. There's cost to a community. Ba -ba -ba -boo -boo -boo. This is what macroeconomics always factors in if it's uh, if you understand it at all. And there's another cost to fo using fossil fuels that he's conveniently not factoring in, which is environmental damage. So two things, wind power prices getting lower and in many parts of the country, blah, 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 already lower than fossil fuels. Second part, he's not factoring in all the costs. So it's like, great, great uh, analysis here. As always, a total genius. This is something I have a lot of problems with. And after I listen to his videos, uh, I feel like... My brain is in recovery mode. What? 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 Fetch the Ben Shapiro cutters. It's like, do people... Do... do uh, what would you say? Like, do, does anybody watch Ben Shapiro and all that stuff besides, like, 80-year-olds? Like, 80-year-old bigots? Like, like, um, bigoted grandpas. 
I feel like they're like I do. I have gotten messages where they're like, "Oh, I kind of used to pay attention to Ben Shapiro, but now I know that he's just like a completely demented uh, puppet of uh, whatever these weird uh, big industries and the you know all this all this crap." Is there any like? Are there any you know? Let's just say, is there anyone below the age of ninety five watching this? Am I just like making fun of people's? Am I just shaming people's grandmas at this point? Look, if if you're a 95 year old grandma, go, go ahead, watch Ben Shapiro. It's fine. Don't worry about it. So, I mean, this guy is paid to say stupid stuff, but this next one is like, this might take the cake for like one of the stupidest things I've ever heard on this channel. I've been, and for this, for my channel, I've been watching a lot of this guy's videos because it's what we call easy content. Uh, but uh, this might be, this is, might be close to the stupidest thing I've heard on here. Sure. A mirror reflection of the cast that struck California last summer. So the entire case from the Washington Post, of course, is that the the grid's failures are due to privatization. Because again, if there's one thing we know about government run systems it is that they are incredibly efficient and they are insulated against every form of attack. Always. This is what the government is great at, except for not. Governor Greg Abbott called Tuesday. Oh, oh, oh and then we go right back to reading. So what he just said there, he's reading a, a, a Washington Post article where the guy says, Oh, because of deregulation, uh, this was a problem. And then he's like, yeah, because government really helps out. But the problem is, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> I mean, this he could easily access tons, tons of research and articles about this. Is that Texas is not connected. They purposely did this to avoid regulation. They're not connected to the rest of the federal power grid. <laughs> and they did that to avoid regulation. If they were part of the grid, they would have been forced to weatherize their gear, and this wouldn't have happened. <laughs> so he's saying this in this sarcastic way of like, yeah, because the government always makes things better. Yeah, right. In this case, yeah, it would have avoided the problem exactly. <laughs> but, but still, deregulation is the answer because Ronald Reagan said so. Because he was in movies. He was in a movie where he played a cowboy. I mean, this this still goes on. People still this should be like this channel should have like so he's got two point seven nine million subscribers. He should have like seven nine subscribers. This crap. I mean, it, it's like we are dumb. We are a dumb country, right? So I think a lot of people look at the production quality and they're like, okay, what what's this? What's this young man got to say? He's clearly this is clearly an official channel because look the. He's got a professional background. <laughs> I mean, everything, and this and this is pretty lazy. Like the last thing he said, he didn't even try to defend it. He's just like, yeah, right, government would help. Yeah, right. Back to reading whatever I'm reading. It's just like so stupid. It's like watching somebody, you know, they just drove their car into a lake after drinking 20 beers, and then they get out of the car and they're like, what's with these lakes? What's what's going on with lakes? And then you're like, dude, may, maybe you should cut back on the 20 beers. You're always drinking 20 beers. No, it's not about that. It's about the proximity of lakes to cars. That's the problem. All right, dude, I really just think you should stop drinking. The, no, I'm not doing that because I personally benefit from that. I personally benefit from that in a deeply, deeply unhealthy way, in a completely self-destructive way, and I want to keep doing it. Ben Shapiro, the 20 beers drunk driver of political commentary. <laughs> and another like deeply funny thing about this is that this little garbage rat goes on and on in this video about um, wind turbines too. He's like, well, the, the problem really is somehow the wind turbines. Uh, they froze. They froze. Like he's sticking with that. He even called his name the video. The wind turbines are frozen. Um... He understands that there are tons of wind turbines in even colder places, right? He gets that. So he's basically like, he's like, the wind turbines froze. And then you're like, yeah, but all the natural gas stuff that you like because you're personally bene benefiting from that froze too. He's like, no, no, the wind turbines froze. Okay. All right, buddy. Bye bye. Bye 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 bye. Flushing toilets. 
This is from Mashable. Why wind turbines thrive in Antarctica and places way colder than Texas? The reality about wind turbines is that they regularly operate in frigid conditions and can be weatherized to perform in wintry extremes. That's why they work in places like Sweden, Antarctica, and Iowa. Over 40% of Iowa's electricity comes from wind. At times, some turbines, particularly those that aren't weatherized, like in Texas, are temporarily shut down. So it's like saying, yeah, we got to weatherize. It's like saying, um, it's like saying, oh, the wind turbines suck because they froze. Oh, by the way, they weren't weatherized. The same exact problem with the natural gas. But some, for some reason, the wind turbines are bad. <laughs> it's like the absolute laziest. It's the it's like the these fossil fuel companies that pay for these idiots channels are like, yeah, just just say something. Just go out there and say something to defend. And we don't care what it is. Just do it, idiot. And they're like, okay, do I get my money? Do I get my... And part of why I wanted to talk about this too is because this is really, again, the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> this is really the tip of the iceberg of like the problems with this absurd, like religious approach to economics and to like these big problems. Because this is one of the many problems that are being approached this way. I mean, just think about it. Right now we have a student debt crisis. The main areas of life, education, healthcare, housing, are all in crisis because of this kind of religious, uh, fundamentalist, nonsense, magic thinking. Oh, no, the free market. If you just uh, have things get out of control enough, then somehow magically something will happen or something. I don't know. And then, um, and then it all doesn't work. And then it's like, well, it's because of, uh, hey, did you hear something? I got to go. Da, 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 da. And then they run and start their car and uh, take off. So sometimes I feel a little bit like hacky, just dunking on somebody who's obviously just totally wrong about everything and paid to lie to, you know, misinform people and all this stuff like, like Benny Pepino. But, um. It is like we we see just like different versions of this all over the place, just failing, failing miserably, top to bottom failures uh, in all these huge areas of life that really have big effects on people's lives. And it's just like, no, well, we're not going to change anything about this because of uh, wait, that's not English. What you just said. Well, says you, says you, you know, his comment section, too, is just honestly astounding because they're not even talking about like the contents of the video in many of his video they're just like aoc forced me to put a pop tart in my butt they're just like if hitler was trans look at my punisher avatar hi america's number one news source benny pepino um 2.7 what 2.79 million subscribers um heavily advertised let's just say you know like classically Abby, <laughs> somebody was saying in one of the comments that we got to have, we had a, we had that run, shoot, run, shoot, jump or whatever that thing was called. Dance, shoot, revolution, whatever that movie that he made was called. When are we going to get a classically Abby movie where she's like, um, it'd be maybe like a lifetime movie or something where it'll be like speed, that movie speed from the nineties with Keanu Reeves, where she has to get one positive comment on her videos or like her house explodes and she uh, spoiler alert she doesn't make it so hopefully i don't know he's making that movie with gina carano member of the muscular class member of the muscular class the muscular class gina carano uh hopefully i don't know hopefully they'll it, maybe it'll be about her fighting a windmill or something her fighting a wind turbine like she saves Benny, but Pe Benny Pepino gets stuck like his pants. He's just like flying on. a. He's like going around and around on a wind, wind turbine because he got his pant belt loop caught in one. And Gina Carano has to save him. Maybe I'm just throwing. I'm just this is what we call spitballing in the uh, entertainment industry, which I'm clearly a part of because I'm on YouTube. OK, guys, thanks for watching. And thanks for all the support and kind words from people who were concerned about the uh, Texas stuff. We're getting back to normal. There was a lot of tragic situations a lot of um people got hurt from this and uh you know some people died from this so um 
I really do appreciate uh, people saying nice things and and who were concerned when I lost my power. And, um, you know, I'm just happy to be flushing toilets again. So as we always say, Bye 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 bye. Hey everybody, and thanks so much for watching this video. Like all the other YouTube and podcast perverts, I now have a Patreon. Every week on this Patreon, I'm uploading two exclusive Patreon exclusive shows. They're like real shows, more produced, more edited. One of them is a behind the scenes show where I reveal all the secrets and YouTube scams that I'm doing, and the other one I just reveal my innermost dark cringe secrets. And at the top level, you can even become a producer of the show and get your name handwritten, hand art art, hand drawn at the end of every episode. So if that's something that you are interested in, um, check it out. On Patreon. Uh, I'll put a link in the, what is the thing called? In the, the description, I guess. So thank you so much, even if you don't. Thanks for watching this video. I know it's hard to get through these things, but um, I appreciate you. Got comments, questions, want to make a song out of the drops? Go to backslash RM Brown on Reddit. Backslash RM Brown on Reddit. This show would be absolute garbage without the producer. Blister Thumb. 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 Brie, Brie, Brie Gutierrez. Brie Gutierrez. Pick, pick, pixels green. Pick, pick, pick green. green. Old man Shia. Shia. And our favorite name so far, Hard Farter. I hope you're okay, Hard Farter. That sounds the muscular class like a problem, to be honest. <laughs> and a very special thanks to Mr. Gorth. Mika G. Mort Calypso. Roberto Vera. Who's that? What? Oh, it's Carl Hochmuth, or Hochmuth. I don't know, Carl, tell me how to say it. Love you! Terza. And don't cancel me for, I'm just reading a name, okay? Tardmaster. Tardmaster. Annihilate. Annihilate. And special guest, Stabster Bait. Kevin Jigaleski. Oh, who's that? Oh, it's Mac. It's Mac. You know it's Mac. You can tell it's him. Krill, Krill Will. Will. And we got D-Pad Chad. Mm-hmm. Burn Dubuel. Jake T. Jake T. Sebastian Delgadillo. Charlotte Glass. CEO of the muscular, the muscular class. class. Beth Van Diver. Diver. I'm sorry about that, Beth. You know I love you. Ray Anthony Cox. Eden Joy. Derek Stoker. Apollo Crow. Liz. Martin Lee. Chelsea G. Derek Jesus Christ Wilson. Matt Woe. Thank you to these beautiful, gorgeous, muscular, soaked up, showering, probably 10 to 11 times a day producers. 